spiritual terms, you always hear about what have I got to give up uh, to be enlightened or to know to divine love or whatever. What do I have to release? It seems like the whole journey is release, release, release. But again, what I would say is that's all from the ego's perspective. You know, like even if we said from Course in Miracle terms, uh, the purpose is to release a pack box. And uh, lesson 23 in A Course in Miracles is I can escape from the world I see by giving up attack box. Giving up! There's that re release idea. But you have to understand that from the ego's perspective, that's exactly how it seems. Because it seems to be the thing that's, that's going through the experience. To believe that you're a separate human being with private mind and private thoughts with your own unique individual identity and your own fingerprints and, you know, that makes you a unique uh, individual, that's a, a symbol. The human being or the human personality is just a symbol to the belief in separation, which is in the mind. So, when you start to let go of things, it's the ego that perceives, uh-oh, this is not good, uh, what am I going to have to give up? Like, it could be family, it could be friends, it could be a location, it could be a boyfriend or girlfriend, it could be it could be a pet, it could be anything. It could be the way that your body looked when you were ten years younger, <laughs> uh, you know, or when people lament aging and getting old. Uh, but all of those things are the ego lamenting uh, it's, it, it is loss, and so everything it perceives on the spiritual journey involves loss. What do I have to give up? What do I have to release? From the perspective of the Holy Spirit, it's just like you're just opening your mind more and more and more to include everything. So it's not really a giving up at all. It's like, oh good, you make this sweep. Whoa, that's good. Whoa! <laughs> You included more. Whoa! You know, you start to include. Until you reach a point of forgiveness where you can include everything. And say, there is no world or cosmos apart from my mind. That, that instead of me being a tiny little speck in a vast cosmos, it's actually that the cosmos is in my mind. Society is in my mind. That thing that seemed to be out there, you got to do all these crazy things for society. What if society is just a concept that can be forgiven just as easily as any other concept? Evil or whatever. So that's what my journey has been, is starting to just include, include. And what is judgment but the attempt to reject something? from your mind and say, that is not me. <laughs> Over there, whatever that behavior is, whatever that, whatever is, that is not me. That's what projection is, to try to project it and say, no, no, me, not me. And that is where the, the gap comes in, you know, where all struggle and conflict comes in, is trying to, to push something outside of your mind and not take responsibility for it, not see that that is part of your mind. So this is good news. All it is is just saying, let me be more inclusive. Instead of like keeping it in the old traditional terms, like, uh, what do I have to do? I mean, even in the East, in India, they, have, they call it the path of renunciation. Listen to the sound of that, renunciation, you know. Renounce. It's almost like you have to renounce something. And yet there are spiritual teachers that have pointed out that, that when you take something and you renounce it, and you maintain an identity apart from it, it's still evolving judgment. It's like, as if you're saying, bad, uh, I, and that is no longer a part of me. And what this is, is not saying that at all. This is saying, just include everything in, gently. <laughs> gently. <laughs> Yeah, like I was saying before, this um, really dancer, when it's, I found out she said, oh, she's, she's not dancing very much, and she's teaching, and she's just full of this and that, and I was talking to the person who told me, and at first I felt kind of bad when I saw her, and, and I said, you know what, I'm going to continue being nice and loving towards her, and he goes, oh, you're better than her, 
And I said, I'm not better than her, I'm just like her. And he had trouble with that. I said, I'm just like her. And he said, why? I said, well, because we love the you know, we love dancing, we love the music, we have that same quality. And he said, oh, okay. It was just like, I'm not better than her. I'm just, yeah, I'm, instead of being like, okay, I'm going to ignore her and shunt her and all that, like everyone else was doing, I said, no, I'll be you know, just as nice and friendly to her as anyone else. And then she came over and hugged me and everything. She was fine. This brings a reflection. Basically, run away from this is, this always found the best, you know, the whole, the, the whole world is basically an illusion, kind of projection of your mind, but you're saying that the evil out there is the evil within yourself, basically. Or anything out there is within yourself. Uh, and functioning, that's at one level, but also functioning, that's one perspective, but functioning kind of compassionately and dealing with situations. Sometimes you have to make some sort of judgment saying, well, that sort of action or behavior is not right, and I shouldn't partake or I shouldn't be involved in it, or that sort of thing. So there is, I, think, kind of a, I see here a, a kind of conflict between these two ideas. Yeah, let's talk about helpful judgment. I call it discernment, or some people call it discrimination. Um, this came up at the gathering we had at Ivan's house uh, when we were having the discussion around um, uh, boundaries. We started to get into the whole concept of boundaries, you know, setting boundaries that might pertain to what you're talking about in a, in a specific situation. Yeah. And what we were really looking at was the idea that what it really is, is the willingness to just follow your inner prompts and your intuition of what feels most appropriate and what feels most helpful. It's not so much about like saying, here, you can't cross this line, or, or seeming to judge against people. It's saying, this person or this behavior is evil or wrong, or making almost like a moralistic or an ethical judgment saying, wrong, that's wrong. Plain, flat out wrong. What it is, is more just as you loosen all these concepts and beliefs in your mind with the spirit, and you start becoming, as I said, more inclusive and more inclusive, you get prompts that are in your mind, that come from your spirit, that are very, very helpful. And they still involve judgments. I mean, obviously somebody could say it took a judgment, like uh, Christine was saying, she was involved in all this stuff today, and I have errors to run, but finally it came down to, okay, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go to the gathering. And that seems to be a judgment or some kind of discrimination, something's been made. You might say that your higher self, or the spirit within you, uh, knows that you believe you're caught in a maze of duality. And anyone who knows anything about a maze knows that there's lots of turns that you have to make <laughs> in a maze. And that's where the prompts come in, you know, where you maybe get a prompt, um, I'm sure it comes up in working with your family, with your son, um, you get prompts to come in of what would be helpful. And it definitely seems to involve behavior. And you might even say it definitely seems to involve judgments if you're having to, you know, lay things out based on what feels right. What I would say is that's just your higher self or your intuition uh, slowly guiding your mind out of the maze as you begin to include more and more in. And so you're really not judging against anything, but in the ultimate sense, you're following these inner prompts which help guide you to a point of release where you can release it entirely. 